Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? How's everybody doing this morning? Good, good. It's good to see you. Hi, back there. <laughs> Getting with some waves. It's great. Well, good morning and welcome to, welcome to church. Welcome to Emmanuel Baptist Church. Um, you are at church on Sunday morning, and I believe you're in the right spot. I believe God has created you in such a way that you, you need a place to worship. You need a place where you can come and like just stop. Pause from you, pl- pause from your life, and think about the Lord. And uh, one of the things I think happens in, on Sunday mornings as we come here and as we um, look to the Lord is he gets, he gets bigger in our minds and we get smaller. And we need that to happen today. That he gets bigger, we get a little smaller, we're just, we magnify him in, in our mind. And so I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here. I believe you're in the right spot. If you're visiting today, um, I'm glad you're here. Uh, there's a little... In our bulletin, you can scan the QR code, and we're very technologically advanced here. Scan that QR code and let us know that you're visiting. We'd just love to have a record of your visit this morning. All right. We're going to get going here. Um, so last week, I talked about how um, before you watch TV, you, you have a rhythm, a, a pattern. You have... You have a ritual you go through before you go and watch TV. And I talked about, I said to the kids, you know, some, have you ever seen your parents yell at the TV screen? <clears throat> and then the Chiefs game happened that night. <laughs> so you, if you hadn't seen it, you probably saw it for the first time last, last Sunday night. But all right, so this is one of the reasons why we gather together. One of the things that we do is we kind of go through our rituals to get our minds focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so why don't you stand up on your feet with me? <clears throat> and as we as we come this morning, I'm gonna I want to read a passage, and then we'll, we will uh, do our call to worship together. But as we do it, um, it, it it is a special day. Um, it's, it's a special day because we are, we are here seeking the Lord, but we're also remembering that we're honoring Darren. <laughs> and we're remembering that. We're here um, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and um, remembering that he's the one that's led us. Darren's been the one leading us in worship for, for years. And so we're so grateful for you leading us into the presence of, of Jesus week after week. And so we want to give honor to where honor is due. And so... I'm going to begin by saying thank you. We'll end there too. Psalm 25 says this. O Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Don't let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. Don't listen to the world. Don't listen to the world. They're going to tell you, don't trust in God. Don't trust in this book. But the word of God says, those who trust in the Lord will never be disgraced. You have put your faith in the right spot by putting your faith in Christ. Don't let my my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. But disgrace comes on those who try to deceive others. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me. For you're the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. But we begin that all day long process right now. Putting our hope in him right now. So let's begin by putting our hope in him by sharing this um, call to worship together. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now, in these final days, he has spoken to us through his Son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance. Through the Son, he created the universe. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, He sat down in the place of honor 
at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels. Just says the name God gave him is greater than their names. Amen. Ah, let's sing and worship our Lord and Savior as we already started this morning by reading his word. shadows of the earth we will lift our eyes to him where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in rejoice rejoice let every tongue in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. say 
walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cry to Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is new him he plunged me reading is Luke 4 21 through 30 listen as I read God's word then he began to speak to them the scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day everyone spoke well of him and was amazed by the gracious words that came from his lips how can this be they asked isn't this Joseph's son then he said you will undoubtedly quote me this proverb physician heal yourself Meaning, do miracles here in your hometown like you did, like those you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Certainly there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the heavens were closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine devastated the land. Yet Elijah was, was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zarephath, in this land of Sidon. And many in Israel had leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha, but the only one healed was Naaman, a Syrian. When they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Our God is full of mercy and grace, so he sent Jesus to teach, to die on a cross. He was buried. He was raised again on the third day that we might have the opportunity to be saved. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. 
Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience would wait as we constantly roam. What Father so tender is calling us home. We welcome the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Patience is great, his kindness is great. What riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath a debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. So we praise the Lord for his great mercy that he pours out new every day upon us. Those are in God's family. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here. pray together as we uh, prepare to give back through our worship of, of God the things that he's provided for us, which is everything. We give back a portion of that to him now as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings. Let's pray together. Father, we just, we give you thanks. Your mercy is more. Your patience is great when we wander away from you. but we can rejoice for those of us who know your son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that we have victory over sin and death. We thank you. Lord, now we just ask that you would bless this time of worship through the giving of tithes and offerings that we just give back a portion of what you provide, which is everything. You created everything. You're the maker of everything. You breathe life, the breath of life into your creation. We thank you. We praise you in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Ah, so 
I'm going to sing a couple of songs today. Uh Uh-oh, that's not good. Just water, just water. (laughs) Um, In this sermon series that Pastor Anthony's been doing the last few weeks, it's the Word of God. And so in cleaning out my office, I come across some songs that I've sung in the past, and one of them was Word of God Speak, and so that is one of the ones I'm singing today, but both the songs I'm singing today really are songs that can be prayed. There's a lot of songs in the hymnal, and a lot of songs that we sing that can just be prayed directly to the Lord, and so that's my hope for today is that don't focus on me. That's not why we're here. I mean, thank you for being here and thank you for your your kindness and your kind words but we're here to worship the lord of lords the king of kings so as i'm singing these songs really don't focus on me but think of the words and lift them up to the lord this morning all right kids are dismissed for kids worship Thank you, Darren. That was wonderful. Can we give him a round of applause, please? I know. Thank you. That was that was incredible. Thank you. Preach out again. Right. So I'm always when I read through. Um, Sorry, you're getting a, like a, a pre-sermon sermon here. Um, so when you, when you read through Leviticus, you know, which is kind of like a drag sometimes, but like it, it, it'll talk about the priests and how there are, God has ordained priests and also musicians to serve in the temple. And it goes on and on and on to explain um, their, their role. And again, like sometimes when you read it, you think, why are we doing, why is it there's so much explanation? But there is a, there is a clear, God has created us to sing and to, to, um, to lift up his name uh, through song and through musical talent. And, um, and God has created some people that way. He's created other people not that way. Um, I don't have that musical talent, and so um, I appreciate the entire band, them leading us in worship, their call, the God's call on their life. Um, and then Darren, also your call, the call on your life to lead us in worship. I'm glad you're going to stick around. You can do those again sometime. Uh, Please take your Bibles and turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. All right, my one assignment was to be short, and I didn't do that, so sorry. I tried. I tried to be good. It didn't happen. Hebrews, so, so just settle in. Hebrews chapter 12. A couple announcements as you get there. Um, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, um, if you are interested in singing in the choir at Calvary, to let Joella know that. So they are going to begin practicing at Calvary for Good Friday service. And so if you, ha- I've heard from some of you that you would like to sing in a choir, and this is, we have an option right now, is for you to go on Wednesday nights <clears throat> at, what time did I say last time? Was it six? Six o'clock to seven for choir practice at Calvary. But if you want to go and be a part of that, will you let Joella know, because they need to, we just have to have a head count for that. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that we have, um, there's a youth ministry meeting after the service today somewhere. Where did we say that was going to be? at the gym, um, right after the service today to talk about centrifuge, and uh, the deadline to turn in the money was sooner than we anticipated, so we're gonna have a quick meeting after the service. Okay, that's it. All right, so <clears throat> George uh, Lucas, you guys know him, right? He's the guy who created Star Wars, and they've been re- creating more and more uh, mini series on Disney+, Plus, and I watched, um, the first one, Mandalorian, and I watched also the, like, like some of the background stuff on it. And um, so the, he's not directing it, but all the directors have been meeting with George Lucas and, 
one of the things he said to them really stood out to me um, as they were talking about these stories and the stories they're telling. And he said to them, to these directors, or George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, telling them as they're creating these sub-stories, remember to make the stories hopeful. Remember to give that to kids because they really need it. That's just, that's, I love that heart. And so I want to, kind of in that spirit, I want to give you something hopeful this morning. Um, I, like you, um, am trying to process a new challenge, new challenges. Um, and it's, COVID is not, it's not one that the world has never seen before. I know COVID is new, um, but pandemic and sickness and uncontrollable disease has, it, that's not new. And so I'm trying to navigate what seems really new to the world, but from my perspective, it's new. It's not new for the world. This isn't new for God. This isn't new for humanity to encounter a, a pandemic. But it's new for us. It's new for me. And it's a challenge. And not only that, but the, the world in which I, I live, the culture in which I live, seems to be embracing whole new thought patterns and ideologies celebrating what seems to be so clearly just falsehood, the, the LGBTQ plus community, and just what seems to be the just complete, utter denial of biblical and biological gender, has, it, it's, it creates this challenge for me as, as a human and as a pastor trying to navigate through this, and I, I get discouraged and just trying to figure out how do I fight this front on two, or this, you know, this thought war on two fronts. It's just, it's difficult. And then as I read through the, the New Testament, as we're going to be looking at Hebrews, one of the issues going on in, in Hebrews and in the early church, we just know this from church history, is they were fighting and dealing with another front, persecution, which has a whole nother front. And I, I, don't, I don't share that. I don't share that experience that they that they shared. Um, I actually have it pretty uh, easy and comfortable. We do, compared to what the challenges that they face. We have it pretty easy and comfortable. Um, it is true. Um, I, like many of you, have suffered really deep, uh, intense loss and pain and and suffering. Um, that, that's true. And I've been, I've been misunderstood. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been misunderstood as you're trying to articulate the Bible and what you believe. And I'm sure it leads to some misunderstanding. Um, but, but for me, it hasn't translated into actual persecution where someone is literally attacking me or imprisoning me for, for my beliefs or what I'm, what I'm preaching. But that raises the question for me, um, you know, I know what I'm experiencing is really hard, but that would have been harder. And so how would I, my question that I keep thinking about is, how would I, how would I respond to that? How would I respond to persecution? How would I endure, like, literal persecution? And today, what I, what I want to do is I want to look at Hebrews, and I want to look at it from this perspective, what this early church pastor trying to minister to a congregation dealing with real trials and tribulations and persecution. And how he tried to encourage them with hope and with faith and how he encouraged them to endure in their faith. And what he does is he uses, he uses, well, he uses all sorts of examples, but in chapter 11, he uses Moses as one of those examples, the faith of Moses. So that's my sermon title this morning, The Faith of Moses, and we're going to look at one little aspect of Moses' faith here, but you're, you're reading through Exodus right now in our Bible reading plan. So you're reading about the Passover, you're reading about Moses and his, their journey out of the Exodus, and so as you're reading through there, as you're reading through Exodus, I also, I, I want you to kind of have this perspective, this lens. This is how an early pastor, early church pastor was interpreting and understanding that event, that Exodus event, that Passover event, and he's, he's inspired. He's, 
his thoughts are included in the Word of God. And so I think what he's, how he's thinking about it matters for, for me today. I think it still applies to us today. So Hebrews, actually going to begin in Hebrews 11, verses 24, 25, and 26. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasure, the fleeting, the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. Fleeting pleasures treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his reward. It was great. So what he's referring to here is the story you read just probably last week or the week before in Exodus chapter 2, where Moses is born, and they see something so, his parents see something so unique about him that they they protect him, and they, they keep him back because the Pharaoh has already issued a decree to start killing off the, the firstborn male children. And so they keep him. They hide him. They hide Moses because there's something special about him. But then he gets adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. And so he grows up, Moses grows up as, a, as one of the elites. He grows up in Pharaoh's household. He has what... Um, he calls here these pleasures and these treasures. And this is, this is what he grows up in, but he has um, what we see, what, what I think he's talking about here, what Hebrews is talking, the author of Hebrews is talking about is there's, there's three things here that kind of pop out in his interpretation of Moses' life that he sees in Exodus chapter 2. And the first thing is that what Moses does is he grows up, he begins to see that this isn't right. My, I'm obviously not an Egyptian, My people are down there, the slaves. And he sees that, and he sees this isn't right. This is wrong. And so he he has to take this act of faith, this step of faith, and so we see that the pastor thinks what, what Moses did was a step of faith for him to recognize that's wrong, and I need to do something about it, I need to leave. It was a step of faith. Moses came to a crossroads in his life, where he had to decide, am I going to continue to follow Pharaoh and all the pleasures and treasures that come along with that? Or am I going to go the right way? So he came to a crossroads in his faith. But what we also see is that he comes to this point where, according to the author of Hebrews, all those pleasures and treasures, this pastor talking to this church, trying to encourage, encourage them, says all those pleasures, all those treasures... Um, those were sinful. He has a real, this pastor has a real negative view of all those pleasures and all those treasures of Egypt. So he sees it, this pastor sees all those pleasures, all those treasures, the, the fleeting pleasures of sin. He says, that's, that's, that's not good. That was, that's not, that wasn't right. But then he has a positive view of suffering. Look again at the text. So it was by faith that Moses left, and when he grew up, he refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, and said he chose to share the oppression of God's people. So he, he was presented with pleasures and treasures. That was one option. Instead, he went with choosing to share the oppression of God's people. All right, and so the pastor's saying that, was, that took faith for him to do that. And he thought it was better, and then he adds this in verse 26, he thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of heaven. The way he understands Moses is he gave up the treasures and the wealth and the, you know, all that comes along with that power and that status. The entertainment, the fun, the the no worries in life, he gave all that up. And instead, he says, for the sake of he, better, he thought it would be better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own all those treasures because he was looking ahead to something different, something better. He was able to see a different alternative. He was able to see that this wasn't right, and he was able to see there was something 
better. And that's the hope. He's able to look ahead and see there's something better. So according to the author of Hebrews, Moses was exercising faith when he saw that was wrong, the, the treatment of his, of his friends, and he was able to imagine a better alternative, and then he gave up his status, he gave up his right, his status, to identify with the people that were suffering. All right, so that's the pattern that this pastor sees in Moses that he says that took faith for him to do that. He had to believe in order to do that. He gave up his status to identify with those in slavery. You see, for this early church pastor, uh, Moses is a sign. Moses points us to Jesus. He, even, he, can't even, he can't even explain Moses without saying, like, he wanted to suffer with Christ. He wanted to take on the sufferings of the Messiah in, in this passage in verse 26. That what, G, what Moses was doing is he was, he's a type of Christ. He, he's, he's not the Christ. He, he's not the Christ, but he exemplifies him. He's a type. He, he's a sign. He's pointing us in that direction. There's something about, G, about Moses' life that becomes the pattern for the life of the Messiah, for the Christ. And this pastor grabs a hold of that and says, that was faith. And here's why this matters. The faith of Moses reveals three things about Jesus. So this pastor, trying to encourage this congregation, going through a hard time, he says, now look at the faith of Moses. He was able to see that was wrong. The treatment, that slavery, that's not right. There's got to be a way out of it. And he gave up all of the pleasures, all of the treasures that he could have had, and instead he went down and he identified with them. The faith of Moses reveals three things about Jesus. First thing is this, is that God sees. I got them all to start with S this time. God sees. That's the first thing. God sees. God sees the wrong. God sees the injustice. He sees their slavery to sin. I'm not going to go back and read it in Exodus chapter 2 and 3, but that's a, huge, that's a huge theme in Exodus. God sees the suffering of his people. He sees it. He knows they're going through it. And when they cry out to him, he hears their voice and he does something about it. But God sees it. And what I like about that verse in, in Exodus is in Exodus 2, 24, he, God says, it's now time. I, they've cried out. I've heard their cry. And he says, it's time to act. I'm going to do something about it. He sees. So here's, here's what I want you to know. God sees you. He saw you this week in your pain and your suffering and your trial and your good times. He saw you. He saw you sees you. The God revealed in Scripture is a God who sees you. He knows exactly what you're going through, and he knows all about the sin. He knows it all. He knows all about that sin that, I mean, the imagery is that you're enslaved to it. It's, it's like a, it's a trap. It's a mouse trap. It looks so, I just, I just want a little bit of that food, but it, it, that sin will trap you. It trips you up. And God, he sees that we're all stuck in that. He sees that we're all entrapped in our sin. And he knows, he sees, he knows the weight that you carry around. He knows the baggage that you carry around. He knows it. Just like those slaves carrying around their injustice, wondering where is God? I mean, how, I mean, how many years are we going on with COVID now? How, how long, oh Lord, until you come and do something? He knows about the baggage you're carrying around, the shoulder weight you have on top of you. He knows it. And what we know about Scripture from Moses and what, the, what this early pastor is trying to say to his church, God sees you. He sees. He sees the weight you're carrying around. So he sees. The second thing is that this God speaks. God sees and then God speaks. 
God does something. When he sees us weighted down with our sin, when he sees us weighted down with our burdens, God sees it, and then what does our God do? He speaks. He declares. He starts speaking. But that's really powerful, according to God. You know, the verses we read every that we've been reading Sunday mornings, long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways through our ancestors, through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken. So he's been speaking. God can, he has always spoken. He sees wrong and he speaks and he begins to fix it. And he's been doing that through the prophets, through the Old Testament. And now what our pastor is telling us is that now God in these last days, he has spoken in his, who? In his son. These words that God continues to speak and continues to save and redeem, these words became flesh. And they dwelt among us. When our God sees the sin that we are enslaved to, when he sees the injustice and the weight that we are enslaved to, when he sees it and he does, this God speaks. He speaks. And he's always been speaking, that's the past. And now he's spoken through his son, that's the present. And what those verses that we read every Sunday morning are about, it's that this is now the highest form of speaking. Jesus is the pinnacle of God's speech. Everything pointed to him. That's why, that's why he can say Moses was kind of looking forward to the Christ. That's, he, he had his, the direction of his faith, since Jesus is the highest, he's the pin, pinnacle, he's the mountaintop of God's revelation. Moses had to look forward to it. What do we do? We look back and we remember that story. But it's because Jesus, according to this pastor, he is the pinnacle of Jesus, of God's speech to us. Because this, this word became flesh. It came and lived among you. So this God sees. This God speaks. And the third thing is that this God suffers. Remember what Moses exemplified? He saw the wrong, he saw the injustice, he saw the sin, and he didn't, or he didn't esteem his position something to be held on to, but instead he went and he suffered with those who were suffering. And our pastor says, that's what Christ did. He had every right. He had every privilege. He was with God in heaven, and he gave all that up, and he came down to identify with your suffering, to take on your suffering. He, he, knew, he knew you can't carry around that, that weight. You, you can't, he knew you couldn't save yourself from your sin. He knew you couldn't carry around the weight of your... Those bags can get heavy. He knew you couldn't carry them. And so he came down and he suffered with us. And the cross is the proof of his, his suffering, his co-suffering, that God sees us in our sins, that he comes down, identifies with us, he shares with us, and not only that, but he dies for us. He's a co-suffering God. All right. God sees God speaks, and God suffers with you. And what the pastor, what this pastor is trying to tell us, remember, go back, let's go back to George Lucas, like, just share them a message of hope. They need some hope. And what the pastor is trying to, as he's trying to encourage this, this congregation, what he means by all this, the reason why all this matters, he says, because all this has happened, Moses exemplified the Christ. Christ went through the same pattern. He saw your suffering. He saw your sin. He connected his life to you. He died for you in your place. He connected with you. He's a co-suffering God. Because of all that, therefore you can have hope. Because of what God has done, you can have hope. Amen? You can have hope. And don't we need it? We need a God who 
can come and meet with us. And that's exactly what John was talking about, this, this, this word of God, this, this God speaking, this God who speaks, this word became flesh, and he came and he, he dwelt among us. He tabernacled among us. He made his home right here with you in your pain, in your suffering, in your life. He connected his life to you. We're just talking about this in, or in we read about the Passover um, and how, you know, there's all these instructions for the Passover meal. And one of those things is that that lamb that they're going to sacrifice, he had to live with them for a year first. Had to be. This, this word of God, he comes and he connects his life to you. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly where you're going, what you're going through. And you need a God like that. You need a God who can tabernacle with you because there are going to be times in your life in the emergency room, in the doctor's office, in the conference room, in the living room, in the kitchen, where you're going to need to know, because you're going to encounter the worst news of your life, you're going to need to know there is a God here with me right here, right now. And what our pastor is telling us is he's here. He sees what you're going through, and he speaks, and he speaks through his son, and he is with you. Therefore, Keep going. Remember, he's speaking to a church that's undergoing persecution. I don't know if I'm undergoing persecution, but I know it's a hard time. It's a hard time for me, and what I need is, what I want is this God. God revealed in Scripture. Who sees my pain, identifies with me, he connects with me, and he's with me. So how do we know all this? How do I know this, that, G, that our pastor sees a connection to Christ's life and Moses' life? Well, I've been, kinda, I've been holding out on you. It's in Hebrews 12. Look at Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. So after, he, after, after the pastor is trying to say, hey, look at the faith of those who have gone before us. Be encouraged by their faith. Be encouraged by their faith. After he, gets, after he goes through that whole um, hall of fame of those who have had faith in God, and, he, and Moses was one of them, he says, in light of all their faith, how their endurance, he says in chapter 12, this is, where, this is where the hope comes in. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip aside every weight that slows us down. All right, are you tracking here? Did you see this? Look, look, look as you're reading through Moses this, this week, read through it through this lens. God is trying to say something to you. Let us strip aside every weight that slows us down. Break the chains of that slavery, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And so you may be stuck in something that you didn't create. You're just, it's just been a hard life. Or maybe it's some sin that's just tripping you up. But what we see here in Scripture is this pastor says, it's what Jesus did when God spoke through Jesus, is those chains are broken. He came down and found you, and he released you from the grave. Be free. Strip, lay aside all those things that ensnare you, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And then he says, and let's run this race, run this race within the endurance that God has set before us. Run the race with endurance. And it fixing your eyes, he says, on Jesus Christ. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. He's the champion. He's the initiator, and he perfects our faith. What he means by that is he's, Jesus is the one who's really opened the door for us to have faith. He began it, and he will end it. He's the pinnacle of, of faith. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. He's the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. So here's where the, the pastor applies all this to Jesus. And he says, Jesus walked through the same thing. He, Jesus, because of the joys awaiting him, he endured the cross, dis disregarding its shame, and now he is seated on, at the place of honor besides God's, beside God's throne. So Jesus connected with you in your sin, gave up all of his privilege, and he connected with you, disregarding its shame. There was a higher reward for him, and now he's seated at the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. And then he says this, because then you won't grow weary and give up.
Brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you one more time. I want to give you hope. And because I, I need it. And so that's that's why I continue to run to scripture. So I, I, I continue to run to this pastor because he gives me hope. And he reminds me, hey, Anthony, that scripture re- you're reading back there in, in, in Exodus about Moses, that was, I was, that's pointing to Christ. And he has done some, something so great, so miraculous that you can put your faith in it. You can put your trust in it. And you can hope for the future. I've been, I've been using kind of this illustration, I guess, of like the past, present, and future. And so what, you've got, we have these past stories of faith that, we've, that, we've been, that we tell ourselves we're encouraged by. But faith is really lived out here in the present. But this is where it's really hard because a lot of times there's things kind of coming against us. We have big questions right here in the present. So these past stories encouraging us and pushing us along in faith and what, the, what, the, what, our, what my pastor tried to tell me is there's also this hope that we have in heaven. What Christ has done for us on the cross, and again, think about this, it's all, for, for this pastor, it's all connected to Christ. Christ did something for you in the past. He died for you, for your sins, and he will do something again in the future. He's at God's right hand, but he's coming back. And every wrong, he's going to make it right. Every injustice, he's going to set it right. And when he comes back, he's going to restore us fully, completely. But we live right here in the present, where some weeks it's really hard, some weeks it's easier. But how do we live? We live by faith in the word of God. Amen. I'd like for you to bow your heads with me and close your eyes. As I've been thinking about this this week, the yeah, that old um, that old I think it's a poem came to my mind that footprints poem, and as you're kind of there with your head bowed eyes closed in kind of a spirit of prayer um, that I encountered that poem I think in high school and I read it and it was like that was really encouraging and and so this this poem the way it goes is you know there's two the the writer of the poem sees two sets of footprints in the sand and um, it's you know it's the it's the it's the person it's the individual and God walking in the sand see two sets of footprints and uh, the poem talks about how, God, you're always there with me. You're walking beside me. And then I encountered this really hard time. And I looked down, and there's only one set of footprints in the sand. I encountered this trial, and, now, and then, then you just disappeared, God. Where did you go? In my hardest time, my hardest point of life, in those years of COVID, I looked down, and there's just one set of footprints. Where did you go, O oh Lord? And I, just, I remember reading that poem for the first time and the response from God in the poem is my child it was in those times it was in those hardest times when you looked down and you only saw one set of footprints those were not your footprints those were mine that was when I was carrying you so what do you need Jesus to carry you through this morning as you're there now, just with your head bowed, your eyes closed, I just want you to pray and just lay it at his feet. And maybe you just needed that reminder because I know it can feel really lonely and it can sure feel like God just made a promise and left and it's just one set of footprints, your own. But maybe you just need to be reminded it's not yours or his. He's carrying you. He's got you. for you to stand up on your feet with me. We're going to sing a song of invitation. If you uh, need to respond to the Lord in any way this morning, we, that's why we do this, to give you a chance to, to respond. To, we want to invite you. If you gave your life to Christ, if you just need prayer, if you just need anything, 
uh, we have a song of invitation, but I will be down here to receive anybody who needs to uh, respond in any way this morning. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily glad you guys are here. I, I think you are here um, on a really good time. Uh, I think you're going to see something really special. Uh, one of the beautiful things about church is uh, we're a family, and um, uh, we're, today's a special day, and so we're going to honor part of our family. <laughs> um, and I appreciate, um, Darren, even your heart this morning, and just when we try to, to clap for you, you, you just reflect it back to the Lord, and so I've just, I've always appreciated that, your, your sincerity, sincerity, and um, honesty, and your, your desire for precision, it, it's just been such a, a delight um, to, to get to work with you, but um, there are other people in this, this church family that, that know you far better than I do, and uh, they want to share some things with you, so Bobby, I think you were first on the list, where, where do you want him to stand? We are here this morning to recognize Darren and the 15 years as Minister of Music and Education as he has served as well. 17 years. So he's here to make sure that the story kind of fits the motive because I'm not very good with details and many times I tell Denise now don't ruin a good story with details. You know, let us tell this, but 17 years as staff. Now help me with my next question. Okay. You and uh, Sandy and Kaylee joined the church how many years ago? Uh, we joined the church in 1992. Okay. And so we were members until about 2000. I filled in a few times toward the end of that decade in different things. You did VBS some those years and uh, then I went to seminary for four years, so I was in Kansas City at First Baptist Church Higginsville, which is a tremendous church as well. We still have friends there, great friends uh, in Christ that we stay in touch with. And a couple of those friends are here today. A couple couldn't make it, but uh, we appreciate them too. So. Well, Darren, they had asked for us to share something, and each I think each of the four of us are coming from different directions, and we all want to hear the kids sing. So. Let's not hold that up too much, but uh, what I wanted to touch base with is when Darren and Sandy Kaylee first came to us, um, we were 
Um, Denise and I were uh, part of a Sunday school class. It was uh, probably about 15 in numbers. And back in that day, the belief was that you would take and split that, that class and take seed out of that bigger class and start another class, and that's how you would grow the Sunday schools. And at that time, Darren and Sandy, being gracious as they were, stepped out with Denise and I and the Royers. And Darren, we met right up here. Up in the balcony. The, uh, the church right. used to be flipped around, so the pulpit was back there, the baptistry, and there was a balcony back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were the balcony group, but we were the young marrieds, and we've held on to that name even to this day. <laughs> Many say we have to give that up, and we'll probably do so. But what I really wanted to talk about was the graciousness of you and Sandy, mm -hmm. your, um, your commitment, your willingness to be part of our Sunday school class, to, to be part of our outreach, to hold gatherings at your home. And um, as we talked a little bit in Sunday school this morning, um, Anthony has challenged us as a church. It's not enough just to be friendly. We have to be willing to become friends. And I think more than anything else, especially the time you were with us, your commitment to follow the Lord's call in your life, um, the ability that you had to come back to us, your home church, and serve this many years. And this is just another chapter in the life as we look sure. forward to serving side by side with yes. you from this point forward. Exactly. But let you know we love you and thank you for being a friend. <laughs> to think about the Golden Girls when he said that. <laughs> I, don't think he, I don't think he knows who's coming up. I, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, we just wanted to say thank you again, Darren. We've, uh, we've been with friends with Darren. We were trying to think earlier, but 1992, wow, that was a little bit before... We started. Yeah, we started dating in 93, and then I remember that um, at some point in time, we, I started coming to church with Steve, and um, they said, oh, welcome to Darren and Sandy and their new little baby, Corey. Yeah, Corey. So it was right, and Corey. Kaylee was a little girl, and Corey was <laughs> when I started here, and, um, but we were here the first Sunday that they brought Corey to church. Yeah. And... Uh, we just, uh, we really had a good time uh, getting to know them. We got to know them from Sunday school and of course from being in choir together. And, and uh, uh, we uh, had a particular connection with them because we, we had two girls and they had two girls and they were able to give us some good advice about what to expect. And, and uh, just, uh, it was really, really neat to get to talk to them about plenty of things like that. Uh, we were really happy when, uh, Darren and Sandy were called into the ministry, and, and but uh, we were sad to see them go, and we really, really missed them when they were gone. And of course, you can imagine we were really excited too when they came back, and we got to got to have Darren here with us again, and and uh, got to minister with him with choir and, and a lot of the other music ministries and and Awana and and uh, a lot of a lot of different things. We spent a lot of time here on Wednesday nights we with the, with the kids and yes. just uh, trying to keep a sense of humor about things mm -hmm. and, and uh, <laughs> it was good yeah it really was it was it was a neat time and um, we uh, I remember that that's where I learned that uh, Darren had a bunch of good I don't know if they what they called him back then but now they call him dad jokes oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> he was really good at those and, and I wish I would have written them all down because there was a whole lot oh, yeah, I've learned well, in the last few years I just borrow them from other people but you know <laughs> there's nothing original about them but that's I enjoy them but the kids, the kids really loved them, and it was it was a great time to, to, to do that. I think did, they did. did they? I okay. think they did. Usually, what I get is, "Oh, Dad." That's kid code for meaning they liked them. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, when Darren had gone through some health issues with his throat and, and everything, he had asked a, a, a few of us to stand stand up with him because his voice wasn't quite as strong and, and we didn't realize that was going to just continue and we really enjoyed being a part of the, the worship team with uh, 
Joella and, and all the other musicians and just seeing that grow and, and uh, that's been a, a great time serving together. And um, just want to say that uh, we, you know, we appreciate Darren and Sandy. We're so glad that they're going to be here, continue to be here with us. And that just uh, mm -hmm. made me sad to hear him say he was he was stepping down, but it, it made me happy to know that they're going to be here, and we we really appreciate that and appreciated so many people that uh, you've influenced and and so many people that you've helped grow to become better Christians and and, and definitely Trudy and I are in that group and we just want to say appreciate that thank you and and uh, and we love you. Hey there. Hey. <laughs> oh man, everybody's got notes. <laughs> it's probably better that way. <laughs> well, my wife says you're just going to ramble if you don't use notes. So okay. Anyway, Maybe but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, just to kind of continue what others have said. Uh, yes. It has been very joyful serving with you in the ministries of Emmanuel. It yeah. really has. And, uh, and I will say that Darren's fun style approach to ministry has been great. Yeah. And uh, one of the things on the fun style, and as I see the kids here, i got to bring this up, is your investment in the gorilla suit. Oh, yeah. Okay. I still have it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> By it's the way, hot, he did bring the gorilla suit to my home on Halloween one night, too. So Nobody. Okay, I think, I think it's, I th hopefully it's still put away. We don't, so, you know, today, but not. anyway, a as the commercial says, uh, the credit card commercial, uh, priceless, the gorilla suit has been priceless. Okay. And, yeah. and your service in the ministries has also been priceless. Thank and you. hopefully uh, this gift will, will be something that will be as valuable to you as the gorilla suit has been to us. Thank you. So. Am I supposed to open this now or wait? Um, yeah, go ahead. Open okay, it it's up to you. So, yeah. <laughs> that gorilla suit is hot, by the way. <laughs> First time I put that thing on, I, I did, we didn't pay up for the, like, the air-conditioned one because they have air cool. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. It's a nailer. And it's a 16 gauge. I don't have one of these, so thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate that. That'll, be, that'll come in handy. Uh, many of you know I'm going to be, I've flipped a couple of houses. With, well, we have, not just me, but Sandy and I. And we're going to do that full time. So I'll be ministering here at the church, but as a layperson, and we'll be flipping houses. So that will come in great. That's good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, Claire. Okay. Hey. I have no so, idea. <laughs> so I'm Claire, and I'm actually here to speak on behalf of my mom, Julie Martinson, who is has been the director of VBS for as long as I can remember. And she wasn't able to be here today, so she has some notes typed up that I'm going to read. So um, Darren always did the music at VBS, and he was always there for the introductory as well. And so my mom mentioned that she never knows what he is going to say, and she thinks it's fun to be the serious person on stage while Darren gets to just goof off and interact with the kids and do whatever the heck he feels like. <laughs> and then she also mentioned, like John mentioned, that not only do you not know what he's going to say, but you don't know what he's going to wear. So every year he would dress along with the theme. So the gorilla suit was for the jungle theme, but then he kept wearing it every year. So like he'd wear a uh, lei with it when it was Hawaiian theme or whatever. He'd just change it to make <laughs> yeah. it be the year that it was. And yeah, so that has been a memory that was engraved in my mind. And so I feel like it was definitely a good memory for a lot you, of people. You still ask about it. I do. He promised me that I could get to wear it when I was a child in VBS, and it never happened. So, he, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so he also puts all of his time and attention into learning the VBS music when it's VBS time. So the schedule that we use for VBS each evening has him working nonstop, start to finish the whole night, teaching the kids the songs. And so I remember, she doesn't have this written down, but I remember personally we eat downstairs beforehand, and I would always sneak up the steps right here, 
and I would stand and watch, and Darren would always be practicing the music while everyone else was downstairs eating dinner. He would be practicing so that he could have all of the motions perfect for the kids so that he could teach them. So I don't know if he knows that I did that, but. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, Thank you. I always spied on you. All right, cool. So then she also wanted to mention one last thing, that he didn't just teach music, but he also gave the missions lessons for Vacation Bible School. And he always wanted to make them relevant for the kids. So sometimes he would send a little prayer card home. And last year, all of our stories were centered around sites of the Holy Land, and Darren and Sandy had actually been there. So he showed the kids pictures of him standing in the same places that they had learned about, which she thought was cool and wanted me to mention. So thank you, Darren, for all of the hard work that you do every summer for VBS to help the kids. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. He did. Darren, I think there's one more song you guys are going to sing, right? Is that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah.
mic check. Yeah, there, there it is. Um, uh, so through the last few weeks, I'll, I'll say something to Darren in the mm -hmm. office about how, like I'm gonna miss you being around because he, he's just been an anchor and like so someone to lean on. He's just so steady and, and faithful and do, just does so much. And, and so I've always, I, I keep saying like, I'm, I'm gonna miss having you around. And he's like, hey, I'm not going anywhere. Like, yeah. And so, <laughs> But it's like, yeah, but that's not the same. Like, I okay. know you're going to be here, but you're not going to be here. Like, I, I just, right. I'm, I'm the type of person that ends up relying. I just really rely on my, my friends a lot. And so I'm going to miss having uh, you around. You're a great friend and, and comfort and encouragement. So, Thank you, brother. Yeah. I know you're going to be around. I'll but. be around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, how do, so do we need to pray? And then this, this is the last song. We could do it that way. Sure. Okay. Will you, so Jeff, you come up here and pray. <laughs> hey, we're just, it's all right. We're just kind of making Take it up one. as we go here. Take that one. I'm going to get off because they're going to sing. <laughs> From our church to you. Thank you. From Angel Church. Thank you so now much. I'll pray. Then I'll go sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank and you. Emmanuel, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me. Even when we were doing songs, maybe you didn't know. Um, I think they're always Christ honoring, and we honored Christ through all that. And we'll continue to do that. As we're Emmanuel Baptist Church, we rely on God's word, and we'll continue to rely on God's word. It's evident to me that Pastor Anthony, he's relying on God's word and uh, relying on the Lord. And we're going to see great things happen here at Emmanuel and in Hannibal. So just like he preached this morning, there's hope. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I just thank you for today. What a wonderful day, Lord. Uh, beautiful sunshine, God, and uh, being able to come into your house, Lord, and be surrounded by friends and family and, and be able to worship you and uh, lift your name up on high. And Lord, as a, the message for today, God, is, is when we do uh, enter into those storms, Lord, that we know that... Uh, that we have hope in you, Lord, that you have promised to never forsake us, God, that you would never leave us, Lord, and that uh, we just turn to you and we just take a hold of your hand. Lord, I thank you for uh, today, Lord, I pray that you be with us as we go on, as we continue this week that is upon us, that everything we do just bring glory to your name, Lord, and I pray this in your son's precious and most holy name, Jesus Christ, amen. Let's stand together. As we go, may your spirit go before us. As we go, may we follow where you lead. May we live what we have learned, share the message we have heard, and be a light unto the world as we go.